there, uh, along with uh, Representative David Willis is with me, uh, Dan Gurley, who's uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, and then uh, Officer Jason Perdue, who was driving, who is our uh, General Assembly Police Officer assigned to us. And uh, we're coming down the highway, and, and, and this fella, uh, we were going highway speeds, came up behind us at a high rate of speed and rammed into the back of us uh, once, then hit again, then hit at least a third time, maybe even a fourth time. Uh, Officer Purdue turned on the blue lights at that point. Then the guy goes around us. Uh, we fell back, followed him, calling it into Highway Patrol and the other agencies. Um, fellow then drives for, I don't know, maybe five, six miles, literally stops in the left lane and then kind of pulls off to the side, onto the side there. We're there and uh, waiting. Uh, a few minutes after that, uh, the Highway Patrol officer shows up and then uh, not long, a lot more troopers, Wake County Sheriff show up, and then they end up uh, arresting the guy. They actually took him in, a, in an ambulance. I'm informed, and I believe the statement's already out, that he's been in charge with, with impaired driving. Uh, you can imagine, though, when we're driving in the vehicle, it's, a, it's an unmarked uh, police Tahoe that we have here, and uh, we travel. You can imagine on the interstate, many of us have been rear-ended by a car, unfortunately, in the past, but normally that happens on the street or happens on a, when folks are stopping. But when you're moving at highway speeds and another car approaches you at a higher rate of speed and then hits the car not once, not twice, but three times, you can imagine the kinds of things that are going through your mind at that point that it's intention. Uh, but uh, fortunately, you know, I can tell you, Officer Purdue did an amazing job making, you know, keeping control of the car. It was, you know, had it been somebody without experience in that, car could have wrecked, could have flipped. You never know what could have happened. The um, uh, situation was handled. Police responded well. You know, just uh, I'm just glad everybody's okay, um, and so we'll we'll have to see what happened. I am told though that the, that the fellow was charged with a, with a DWI that he was impaired when he was driving. They seem to think that it was uh, my understanding is some sort of drugs of some kind, uh, but just a bizarre situation. But at the end, at the end of the day, just glad that nobody was hurt. Do you have any reason to think that this man knew who you were that you were targeted in any way? No, I don't. I don't believe we were targeted. I will tell you, at the time it was happening, we certainly certainly felt that way uh, but uh, when he you know kind of seeing everything after the fact with the fact that he was he was impaired and, and, and all those circumstances it I don't think it, I don't think it was uh, targeted so I mean oddly enough if he had to hit a car it's probably good he hit us instead of you know somebody who's got trained law enforcement driving the you know, driving the vehicle instead of just you know a young driver an elderly driver who knows because uh, you know getting hit you know, I've talked to you know Couple of police officers since then. That that hit of that at, at that speed of a car, I mean, y'all seen this? Could make a car spin out, flip over, all kinds of bad stuff. So, uh, thank God we're all just all right. Well, what did happen to the car when you all felt to be hit? Did it, did it shift the car at all? Was it? I mean, it just took the impact. It was um, when he hit it. He hit it really hard. It jolted, but it also kind of got a little squirrely. I mean, it it, it you know it, it's it didn't just it wasn't just like a straight hit and move forward. I mean it. It got a little squirrely, but uh, Purdue kept it under control and uh, kept kept you know, kept calm. And so, but like I said, the guy hit us three times, and when he turned on the blue lights in the car, it's a, you wouldn't know it was a police car unless you, you know, let's see that. Uh, the guy goes around us and you know fell behind, and followed him. I wouldn't say it was a high speed chase or anything like that, but it was highway speeds. But then, but then what was interesting, and I just thought about this, is there was another car ahead of him in the left lane, and he kind of recklessly went around that car and then like you know just kind of but just it's like he was i think we were the first thing that he hit that slowed him down you know the truth but he just kept going i don't even know if he knew what he was doing but uh, he certainly shouldn't have been on the road what lane were you in at the time when, when, it got, when it got hit? we were in the right lane, in the right lane. we were in the right lane. and then he went over to the left. so we were in the right lane and then he went in the left and then we fell behind in the left as, as i can remember you can imagine this, these things happen really fast uh and of course, sirens on, blue lights, all that. And we're trying to get the highway patrol and the other folks that we that get involved. And, uh, so, so what made him stop? I don't know. So what he actually did, he, not only did he stop, he stopped in the middle of the highway. I mean, he stopped in the left-bound lane of 64 or 87, whatever it's called there, and then finally kind of pulled off to the shoulder and just sat there. So at that time, we're thinking, okay, was this intentional? You know, what, what's going to happen now, right? This guy stopped. And he just stayed in his truck the whole time. And then uh, a few minutes later is when we had uh, the first trooper. And then a few minutes after that, there's, I don't know how many officers there, but it was a lot. And, and, and I got to say, they did an amazing job. So Jason was able to contact Highway Patrol. Did he have a, a radio in or did he call 
We, uh, he was on the phone, I was on the phone, and I don't know, maybe Dan was on the phone too. I think three of us called on the, on the phone. One of the, yeah, something like that, yeah. In all, how many of you were in the car? Four, yeah. Uh, but Representative Willis and I were in the back, Dan was in the front, uh, and then uh, that Purdue was driving. Did the officer Purdue have any idea that he was going to be hit, or were you guys just having a conversation, and next thing you know, you were going to be hit? He, what I asked him, he, he said he saw some lights approaching fast, then the lights disappeared, which meant the guy was, and then, and then he hit us. I mean, it was, it was that quick. So I don't know, I don't want to estimate how fast he was going. I mean, we were clearly going at highway speeds in the 70 mile an hour zone, and this guy was on us in no time. And, you know, the, the first hit, that was strange enough. The second hit and the third hit, you're feeling like, who is this? Is this somebody trying to run you off the road? And so that's, that's what. Got everybody obviously a little uh, uh, excited at that point, but uh, he—I uh, you know, I don't know that he—I doubt he knew who we were. I mean, I don't know what's in the man's mind, but uh, it, it sounds like he was impaired, and I'm t- and, and you know, he, I'm told he resisted arrest, and I'm told he's right now already out of jail on, on unsecured bond. Uh, did you or anybody from your office ever take any contact with him? Did you notice him at your event earlier today? No, no, we don't know. Have no, have no reason at all to think that he knew who I was or, or any of us in the car or even that it was a, you know, any kind of law enforcement vehicle. You mentioned uh, your concern that you already know, backed out on the street. Can you kind of explain that a little bit more? Well, I don't, I don't want to second guess anything that happens, but it just, you know, I, I'm a lawyer when I'm not here. Um, and, and my experience in my part of the state is if someone did something like this, they would generally be held on some kind of secured bond, particularly where they, I understand, he resisted a police officer. I mean, there was clearly some property damage. I don't know. If, you know, if the guy's got some sort of drug issue, probably needs some help with that. Certainly doesn't need just to be thrown back out on the street, I would say. But uh, that's that's a little above uh, my, my ability to comment on. But, uh, we went to uh, we had a workforce uh, event at the uh, at Wilson Community College. Uh, it's actually a I was hoping today I was going to be talking about that instead of this, right? Uh, but they have an amazing program they're doing right now in partnership with their they have an early college high school and then they have a, an apprenticeship program with a number of companies. And so they're, they're, it's a very creative way that they're working on. So they were having a job fair that day. So we met with a number of the folks there from that were there from companies, folks of the college. Kind of working through that program because those are the kinds of things when we're talking about workforce we're trying to promote and trying to expand upon in the state so we we met with them went through that we then also went uh and, and representative Fontenot was with us for all this uh we then went downtown they had this uh downtown wilson is going through a, a, a bit of a revitalization and they've taken an old building there and they've renovated it to some uh, it's got a shared workspace kind of project incubator we did some state appropriations a couple years ago to help out with that. We met with them, met with some of the folks who use it, getting some information on that. Uh, we then went, and you'll see this on my social media, went to the, the Whirly Gig Park uh, to see that, see some of the revitalization. Uh, went out there and saw that one. Uh, then Representative Fontenot had a, had a, a campaign reception uh, for about 45 minutes at the Elks Lodge. Uh, went to that, uh, met with him, uh, had a number of local officials at that as well, a number of city council members. Then after that, we had a dinner with a a veterans advocacy group, the Independence Fund, that was set up to talk about some policy initiatives that you all will be hearing about later on, some things to do for a number of our veterans and for folks who uh, uh, served with us. Y'all remember the situation of the uh, uh, interpreters who were in Afghanistan who came back. They worked with a lot of those folks, helping get those folks that worked with us, that were embedded with us, resettled and, and connected with jobs and careers. We were meeting with them about some of their initiatives. So after that, it had been a great day. Uh, we're coming home, and then uh, all the events I described earlier unfolded after that. Yeah, it was, um, the, the, as far as the exact like exit number, somebody says like maybe exit 13 or mile marker 13 is where we were hit, and I think we were, uh, I remember this, there's a sign that says exit seven, one mile, and then there's one of those, you know, the information boards, they tell you like the Amber Alerts and those sort of things. It was one of those. Wherever we stopped, that was like right there ahead of us. Yeah. So, so, so probably what? Probably six, seven miles after that, I guess. I'm not sure where it is. It's one. Of the, it's one of the Black Tahoes. 
I mean, it might be downstairs. It may be off-site. I don't know. They may be getting it. They may have it at a body shop. Uh, it's the, the damage. I mean, it's a, it's in the rear bu- It's the rear bumper. I would have thought from the way the hit was, I, mean, it, I would have thought the back end would have been just crushed in or something. But it actually doesn't. If you just look at it, it doesn't look that bad. I don't. But, you know, with cars now, sometimes you can have frame damage. I don't know. But it, it, you can see on the bumper where it, uh, where it got hit there. But uh, it didn't. It wasn't like all mangled up. It was drivable and everything. Did you drive back here in that car or in another vehicle? We, uh, Officer Purdue stayed there, and then uh, the Highway Patrol uh, brought me and Representative Willis on back because we'd been there for a while, and they were trying to finish their report and uh, get the uh, get the driver, I guess, processed and whatever they needed to do. Where's Dan? Is he on the side of the road? Dan? Yeah, we didn't, nobody cared about Dan. No. Yeah. I don't know what Dan was doing. I, don't know. No. Uh, I think he came. He came in another car. They, they were the patrol car only had room apparently for two of us. So I actually thought he was in the car at first. And I looked around. You weren't in there. So no, I, I climbed back to the top of the there. There you go. And there you go. Once they were released, I there, you, there you go. And we're all glad Dan wasn't driving. Let me be clear on that. <laughs> About what time did you get back to Raleigh? Did this happen around nine thirty or something? That's a good question. Nine forty. I want to say we got back here. A little before 11 sometime. We've been there for a while. So, it wasn't your first car. No, no, no. It was one of, the, one, of the, one of the Tahoes you see downstairs a lot. So, yeah, yeah. But glad every, seriously, glad everybody is all right. Uh, and I just, I can't say enough good things about how Officer Purdue handled it. I mean, he just you know, stayed calm in the situation, did, you know, kept, you know, kept control of the car because I if somebody didn't know what they were driving or just weren't trained, I mean, it could have, I think, could have gone south in so many ways because it was a hard hit. And, uh, you know Bob, what's that? You know Bob Perdue is working today. Is he off today? Uh, I, th- I think he deserved a day off today. He, uh, yeah, he's he's not coming in today. So. Uh, uh, I imagine you were, you know, pretty shaken when this happened. How was Representative Woods? And you just, you know, we stayed and talked until the end and headed back home. And- yeah, we it, we did. I mean, just just grateful everybody was okay. I mean, just really thankful. Because that was, uh, you think in those kind of things, you think how something like that could go south in so many ways, and and you know, we were you know, we were worried initially, right, that this was something intentionally targeted, like this guy was trying to take me or somebody, probably Dan, out for some reason, right? I don't know, you know, that that that, that it was something uh, like that, and, and and I don't I don't believe that was the case. I think this person, from what I see, was just so impaired to such an extent that he was just out there and it could have been it could have been anybody and it just happened to be us and uh, it worked out worked out well in that respect like I say if I could only imagine me to hit you know somebody that didn't have that experience was in like a like a little car or something like that it could have been really bad right so so yeah so it wasn't my personal vehicle it's one of those and they and on those vehicles uh, they just have what just a regular North Carolina tag on them, right. and, you, and you can't like for example the blue lights, you can't see them. They're kind of hidden. You got to look for them. They're kind of tucked in the grill or up in the up in the back, something like that. Yeah. So the general assembly was. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like it was purple and yellow and No, no, no. The, generally, the, just one, the, the sta- those are usually staff. The, the two police ones that they use. There's the one that's marked, but they don't drive it that much. It's not not in that great of shape. But the two. There's two of the black ones that are police vehicles, uh, and they have the white tags on them. So, anyway, well, good to see you all. This wasn't what I expected to deal with on a on a Friday, you know, but uh, but uh, but we're just really very really very thankful and appreciative of the work really of not only Officer Purdue but all of the uh, police and first responders. So with that, appreciate y'all coming today. Thank yep, thanks. Yep. Y'all have a good week.